Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Granules India Limited Q3 and 9 months FY22 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Dr. Krishna Prasad, Chairman and Managing Director, Granules India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to you. Uh, and also thank you very much for attending our Q3 uh, FY22 earnings call. I hope all of you and your families are doing well and continue to be safe. Despite the continuing disruptions, we are happy that we are slowly getting back to normalcy, as is evident from the increase in revenues compared to the last quarter and the same quarter of previous year. The revenue growth came in with a lot of underlying dynamics such as raw material price increases, unstable supply from China, and also part supply constraints. Although segment-wise gross margins have remained flat compared to Q2, the overall gross margin recorded is lower in percentage terms due to change in segment mix in the total revenue. Share of finished dosages had come down from 57% in Q2 to 46% in Q3, which is due to the rationalization of inventory by our customers, mainly in the U.S. During the quarter, we had filed two U.S. ANDAs, two Canadian dossiers, one U.S. DNF, and one CEP, and also had received three U.S. ANDA approvals. FY22 had been a year of consolidation for us. The COVID pandemic has impacted the economy, government, and business in lasting ways. These changes, whether induced by the pandemic, supply disruption and climate change, or induced by advances in science and technology, presents a unique opportunity in this disorder, and we at Granules strive to benefit from the emerging megatrends. The global companies across the world are looking out for reliability, robustness, and sustainability in their supply chain, and are seeking alternate options to Chinese dependency, especially for pharmaceuticals and chemical products. Peter Drucker had said, the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence. It is to act with yesterday's logic. Our growth so far had been built on scale, manufacturing excellence, focused execution, and cost leadership backed by solid track record on quality, compliance, EH&S. We have achieved leadership position in the key molecules and have achieved critical scale. We now have one of, one of the world's largest facilities for PFIs and finished dosages. We are now ready to turn a new leaf in our journey. We are taking a leap to transform our business to the next level. Granules 2.0 will be built on the focus on R&D, technology, and sustainability. We will be investing in R&D infrastructure, scientific talent, and partnerships in science and technology, which will lead to sustainability, leadership, and backward integration. Our R&D initiatives will help us broaden our capabilities, leading to increased focus on quality of our portfolio and higher regulatory filing. Sustainability. The world is set to move towards sustainable, environmentally responsible, and green chemistry. 
we believe what is good for society is good for business as well. We will be building sustainability by design in our processes, products, and our green facilities. We desire to achieve this through our long-term ESG strategic work. The ESG journey at Granules has commenced last year with continued engagement with all key stakeholders, including our employees, regulators, customers, suppliers, and communities around us. Innovation and the use of emerging technologies in the area of renewable energy, heat recovery, waste and water management. We will strive to reduce the carbon footprint comprehensively across all activities. We are confident that green and sustainable chemistry can be and will become cost effective as well. It requires scale with which we will bring down the cost as well as the carbon footprint. We are working towards becoming a carbon neutral company. Backward integration. We will be leveraging our technology platforms to achieve full backward integration and control the supply chain for our key products. This implies going deep into the value chain and starting with chemicals that are commercially available in India and using new technologies, process, processes with sustainability built in the value chain. Organizational transformation. The key to business transformation is building capability and organization aligned to the transformation agenda, including leadership and culture. We have started this from the very top and strengthened our board and executive leadership. Dr. Shaumen Chakraborty had joined our board as non-executive independent director. He brings a deep domain knowledge of the global pharmaceutical industry with his leadership experience across multiple functions. Mrs. Sucharita had joined our board as non-executive independent director. Her experience in organization and HR transformation initiatives and commercial orientation will be an added asset for us. Dr. KVS Ram Rao had joined us as Joint Managing Director and CEO. Dr. Ram Rao has varied experience in the area of chemical and API businesses, including R&D and manufacturing, through adoption of innovative technology and best practices in sustainability. Dr. Ram Rao will be spearheading the transformation agenda to take venues to the next level of the growth trajectory. We will continue to build management capabilities, both organically and inorganically, through our people and transform ourselves into a learning organization. Our people are central to what we have achieved so far and source of our optim optimism for a better and bright future. We are in the process of building a roadmap for commercial excellence, portfolio management, supply chain excellence, and business analytics. We will be leveraging the advances in the area of IT and digital tools to bring transformative value by reimagining the business processes through a digital transformation roadmap and identifying key priority areas and early wins. Outlook for our future is brighter than it has been ever before, and we'll be sharing more details around the transformation roadmap in the coming quarters. With this, I would request Sandeep to take you through a few key financial highlights. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let me now move on to the financials for Q3 FY22. Despite the continuing challenges, we had a better performance compared to Q2 of the current year. We believe that our performance will further improve in the coming quarters. Revenue. The third quarter revenue was 997 crores as compared to 845 crores in Q3 of last year. Our volumes were down compared to Q3 of the previous year, but we have been able to pass on a significant portion of price increases into our customers as specified in our Q2 calls, which has resulted in a better top line. Revenue share from other molecules is maintained at 19% since 
for the second quarter in a row, thereby moving towards our ultimate strategy of reduction of our dependency on the core molecules. The sales breakup as per business verticals and regions are presented in our investors presentation which is available on the website, gross margin. For the quarter, the gross margins contracted from 53.7% in a QC of FY21 to 46.6% in the current quarter, mainly due to reduction in the margin of some of the products, especially paracetamols, due to increase in raw material prices and freight cost. The overall share of finished processes in the global sales mix has reduced from 50% in QC of last year to 46% in QC of current year and this has also contributed to the reduced margin. EBITDA and EBITDA percentage. EBITDA percentage for the quarter was, oh, sorry, EBITDA for the quarter was 174 crores when compared to 212 crores in QC of last year. Apart from the gross margin drop, we have also seen increase in freight cost by 29 crores and increase in R&D cost by 13 crores as compared to QC of last year, R&D. Our R&D spent for the quarter stood at 35 crores compared to 22 crores in the previous year. The year to date R&D spent has been 109 crores compared with 64 crores in the previous year, same period. Last year, we had some part of our R&D disrupted due to COVID, but in this current year, we are on track with our R&D goals, which we plan to achieve, net debt. Our net debt increased by 148 crores on account of increase in the short-term borrowing to finance added working capital needs. Cash to cash cycle, our cash to cash cycle increased by 19 days from 117 days in March 21 to 136 days mainly on account of planned increase in the inventory. Operational cash flow. Operational cash flow for the quarter stood at 23 crores compared to 93 crores in QC of FY21. This was mainly on account of higher working capital needs. The capex spent stood at 95 crores in the current quarter and in nine months for this year, the amount was 327 crores. With this, I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Oh. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Harish Agrawal, individual investor. Please go ahead. Harish, may I request to unmute your line from your side and go ahead with the question, please? Need you no response? We move on to the next participant. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Rahul Veera from Abacus. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. It is good to see the sequential improvement uh, in the top line as well as the bottom line. Uh, so just want to understand now, in terms of the gross margin, we've mentioned that the formulation revenues were impacted and hence the gross margins have sharply come off. So are we seeing any sequential improvement from here on? Or you still think that uh, destocking at the 
uh, front end is still going to take some time uh, i can't hear you properly rahul but uh, i think uh, i can understand what you're saying so there are two two factors to drop in gross margin one is the fd percentage that has gone down fd is normally more profitable than pfis and apis and the other one is also paracetamol paracetamol uh, there have been tremendous increases in costs and uh, we started passing on uh, the cost increases some of the cost increases to our uh, customers however the prices of rometis have still been going up and there's a big time lag and the margins on paracetamol have shrunk the value of sale is very high but uh, uh, the margin is slow is very low so paracetamol has eaten into our overall margins and also the next thing is fd and coming back to fd right now there is to be see lot of rationalization of inventory that our uh, customers and mainly in the us but going forward we see that uh, this this should definitely get corrected we also see some signs of uh, improvements in the last uh, i would say few weeks sure sure fair point sir and uh, in terms of the paracetamol we mentioned this quarter so sharp qq increase in the sales of paracetamol so do you think uh, specifically for the european region so or uh, do you believe this wave three was a kind of a reason that we saw one off kind of a sale and this may not repeat going ahead i cannot say what is one off rahul there have been so many uncertainties going on uh, actually in the past we never thought that this uncertainty is going to last so long uh even today while we see uh, rays of hope everywhere uh, still i would not dare uh, make any assessment today we have to see as we go on but definitely one thing we, we see here is there is going to be a quarter on quarter improvement as we go by how much improvement i cannot say but there definitely will be an improvement sure sure fair point sir this is helpful thank you so much thank you participants you may press star and one to ask a question The next question is from the line of Tushar Manodani from Motilal Oswal Financial Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So just taking forward uh, Rahul's question, so inventory acceleration, how how long? Maybe in like next couple of months we should be normalizing in terms of the supply, or it will take longer than that. Uh, Tushar, since uh, this is mainly I said it's from the US market, Priyanka is also on the call. Maybe it's good that she takes this uh, question. Priyanka, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, hi, Tushar. So, inventory rationalization is uh, very company specific. We, like you know, we do have a B to B arm and a B to uh, B to C arm. So, on the B to C division, which we handle ourselves, we have a decent level of inventory that uh, we are comfortable with. But on the B to B side, some of the partners that we still work with, uh, we are not aware of how much inventory they hold at the moment. So, and um. I do believe that in the US market though there is a situation where uh, there's too much inventory uh, that's being held and most companies were that weren't able to get market share uh, were giving up so I do believe that as we go forward the existing companies with large levels of inventory will cut it down to a more normal level uh, which we have started right now but that said there also is an increase in uh sale time to the us which could potentially mean that some customers with market share which includes us could increase um their inventory levels going forward depending on how the situation is so to answer your question at this point we're not sure how our customers uh, how our partners would act we have to just wait and see over the next uh, couple of quarters they could increase their inventory which means we would have to produce more batches or they could uh, rationalize it a little bit more Not to and uh, so, so but uh, considering for the ibook proofing, we've seen uh, good of these um, both why or why or why as well as quarter on quarter. Any specific reason to highlight there? Ibook proofing during the COVID times, uh, Kishar, has been more emphasis on paracetamol as the drug for uh, COVID, and ibu ibu proofing has taken a beating. So that is one of the reasons. And the other side is. ibuprofen prices as you uh, i don't know if you remember some time ago ibuprofen api used to be sold at $20 today it's down to $10 or uh, $11 right. and subsequently the selling prices also have come down so margins when they are protected as a percentage the absolute uh, sale value has come down 
on the system and just lastly if so i'm considering these scenarios and maybe more requirement of inventory so does it mean that the working re- working capital requirement will remain elevated going forward uh if the selling times inventory is one is to keep a lot of safety stock i think we are fa- fairly in good position on that and with uh, today's uh, selling times which have increased by almost uh, 70 80% of the normal selling time so the inventory on the water also has increased so unless uh, the selling time still worsen i don't think we may need more inventory but it all depends on uh, how the logistics are going to work out Okay. So, just just lastly on this, so what kind of net debt levels can uh, think uh, 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 estimate on end of FY22? So, sorry, Tushar, can you come again? Uh, yeah. So, Tushar, net debt level will be uh, probably at this range only uh, at a, at a net debt level, certainly because there will be. some loan repayment which will happen uh, in in this quarter and uh, probably will 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 have a scope of having some additional debt to fund our working capital needs but net level it will be same thanks thanks a lot thank you participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from line of ranveer singh from sunidhi securities and finance please go ahead uh, thank you for uh, taking my question uh, and congratulations sir, uh, for good uh, set of numbers in this quarter uh, so my question was related to paracetamol uh, paracetamol from last quarter we have been saying that there is a problem in availability of raw material basically in pap uh this quarter we see a sharp jump of q and q so uh, the availability has normalized now uh, on uh, raw material side not really and we actually we were hoping that one indian manufacturer uh had started production already and others would start one more would start but the manufacturer has already started he is also having lot of quality issues so that way i mean even though we had some material from him uh, it's not in a I and mean, uh, uh, we had to stop purchasing from him and that way and chinese uh, none of them have increased their capacities so as of today there is actually been no improvement in spite of our hoping there would be but uh, possible good news is the biggest plant in china that has shut down uh, we hear from them that they will be starting within a week but then there would be trial runs and validations and other things so it may take about 3 months Uh, for us to start getting material and achieve some sort of normalcy so another 3 months we may have to go through this yeah so i wanted to understand in this quarter the kind of because pricing has also been pressure so volume uh, has gone up significantly q and q so where uh, did we get the raw material if so that was no volume had not gone up runway it what has gone up is the price selling price raw material price and the selling price so the uh the uh, part of the paracetamol revenue had been driven up only by pricing like you said last time we were talking about passing on some orders so some we were pa- able to pass on okay fine because uh, then we also see that uh, so okay so gross margin was also impacted due to that uh, pricing pressure in paracetamol that you said you're yeah, right yeah okay and uh, secondly uh, what was the capex uh, during uh, this nine months capex so far is about 325 uh, crores and we think we'll be completing this year with about 400 crores okay so uh, we see free cash flow is in uh, in negative so this is uh, working capital has increased basically it was in capital has increased by about 70 crores approximately okay okay and going forward uh, uh, how uh, what would be uh, the working capital cycle uh, for a full year basis we should be in the range of uh, this only maybe a little bit uh, 120 would be our desired number ccc okay i'm going to take one idea 
Okay, and full year capex for FY22? Uh, so the capex for next, you are talking about FY22? Yeah, for FY22. So nine months, yes, sir. So for full year, it will be. Uh, about 200 crores, uh, Andre. Okay, okay. Uh, on business side, uh, we see that growth in uh, non-core molecule has gone up uh, significantly. Uh, just on longer perspective, wanted to understand that uh, growth in core molecule is getting matured now, and so our focus would be on non-core business. Uh, so, uh, and uh, or can we expect that even the core business can recover going forward uh, in a significant way? Core business, there's more uh, still uh, potential left runways because today it may have matured in the U.S. where they have a decent, uh, a fairly decent market share. But uh, we are opening up uh, venues in Europe and uh, uh, Canada and uh, South Africa. So these are new areas where we see the core business growing. And in fact, uh, in this quarter, we should be launching one or two products with our own dossiers in uh, Europe and also possibly the U.K. So there is potential for core business, but also the real growth going forward has to come from new molecules, and we've been working on so many molecules, strengthening our back end, going all the way to the basics, and doing a lot of filings. So going forward, contribution of uh, non-core molecule, uh, okay, can we expect some 40 50 percent kind of thing in the next two, three years? No, yeah, not next year. Maybe uh, next two, three years later, it could be around that. Because, like I said, there's still growth left in the core molecules. There's still many countries where we can. Uh, now we have we have been in a good position in the U.S. We want to be in the same position in uh, different parts of the world. And going forward, the existing molecules and the newer molecules. Whatever we do, we are going to strive for uh, global leadership in these molecules. So there's still a lot left. Yeah, yeah. So currently it's around 20%, I believe. The non core yeah. molecule is around 80%. So what uh, the, the kind of growth we see, 40%, we have uh, growth in yeah. this quarter in non molecule. So wanted to understand is this kind of growth rate? No, I don't think uh, I don't think we'll get to that 40-50% level coming from non core molecules within the next two years. This is not going to happen. But we certainly uh, see a significant uh, increase, and all the R&D activities that we're, most of the R&D activities that we are um, focusing on, like CMB said in his opening speech, will also be focused on non-core molecules. So you will see a significant increase um, in the contribution from non-core going forward. Okay, fine. And, and just the last one, on R&D, you see in this quarter, the R&D intensity has significantly, has significantly come down, uh, Q and Q. So any particular reason or what would be the outlook for a full year? Or next year, if you could keep for R and D as a percentage of sales. No, so uh, actually, uh, I will take this. Uh, other uh, reduction uh, is there in terms of R and D, which is uh, last quarter uh, there were certain uh, findings, and the pivotal and pilot studies uh, uh, were paid for, and uh, more or less uh, the the amount of spend that we have made in three months that will be an average run rate. So our average run rate for the quarter, next quarter will be around 40 crores. So uh, last second quarter was high because of certain specific spends. Third quarter normalizes, and fourth quarter will be around 40 crores based on the run rate of these nine months. We will be around 140 to 150 crores at, at the end of the year. Okay, okay. Fine, that's all from my side. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ashwini Agarwal from Ashwo Investment Management. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Prasad um, and team. Uh, fairly uh, good set of numbers in a very, very difficult scenario. So, you know, I mean, the way I, it's more of a comment than a question. The way I think about it is that two of your key molecules, right, paracetamol and ibuprofen, are seeing uh, different stories around them. On one hand, you have very high prices 
and thinning of margins because raw material prices of PAP and availability of PAP is a question mark. And on the other, the prices have completely collapsed and there is unwinding of inventory at the, uh, at, at the customer's end. And second thing is that, you know, overall your working capital in rupees million or rupees crores is looking bad, even though your actual number of days or cash conversion cycle hasn't materially worsened for the simple reason that prices have gone up and you've got additional inventory on the sea, as you say. So it's kind of a perfect storm. So I'm more looking for, you know, you've been in this industry for, you know, over nearly 40 years now. So when you look back and think about it, I mean, how do you see things normalizing? I mean, what's, what's your best guess? How long will it take for things to come back to normal? One or two quarters or could it be longer? How, how, do, you, how do you think about it? I mean, there's very exceptional times we are living in. Actually, based on the current scenario, I mean, if uh, uh, you know, unexpected things happen, no fourth wave or fifth wave. I think things should get back to normalcy in about two two quarters. But uh, now everything is so uncertain. Uh, we are hoping that it will be within this time frame. Which would basically and bring back your paracetamol volumes back, prices down, margins up. And on IBU, it would bring back uh, prices to a more sensible range than these current depressed levels, or at least your margins back to what, or spreads back to what they would be in a normal circumstance. That that should be a reasonable expectation on a two-quarter basis, right? Yes, uh, Ashwini, we think that uh, I, I don't, I cannot say that we will go to 57%, 54% gross margins, but around 50% gross margins, we should be able to uh, uh, achieve within uh, two quarters. Yeah. No, uh, I, I think that's great. I, I think I think it's it's a wonderful performance in what has been a nearly a perfect storm. Um, so uh, you know, congratulations and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is. From the line of Harit Ahmed from Spark Capital Advisors, please go ahead. Good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a uh, question on the must loss at our Dagi Lapur facility. Uh, uh, so, can you provide uh, an update on the timelines uh, here and, and uh, some color on the kind of products that we are uh, targeting and how many we filed? The MUPS block is uh, almost done, uh, Harit. And uh, we are uh, trying to do the qualifications of equipment and also uh, validations of products also will start there. And uh, as I've been mentioning in the past few quarters, uh, we have two products already approved in the MUPS area, which is the KCL tablets and KCL capsules. So uh, these we have been doing in other blocks. They'll be scaled up in this uh, MUPS block now and we'll have enough capacity uh, uh, the capacity was constrained in the past, but now we'll have enough capacity. And we filed uh, a few, two more products already, products actually, in the MUPS area. And before March, another two products will be filed. And next year, we expect to do about eight to nine, approximately eight to nine filings in the MUPS area. So, uh, can we expect a commercial supply from this facility to start uh, maybe in the second uh, half of FI23? Uh, sometime towards the end of first uh, quarter itself, we should be able to start. Uh, start. Okay. In, in a limited way, and it won't be all out. Okay, okay. Uh, in, in, in your uh, release, there's a uh, footnote on uh, duty drawback claims of around 17 crores uh, that you've recognized. So trying to understand in which line item this has been included. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So duty drawback uh, has been recognized as a other operating income. Okay. That's part of the revenue. Yeah. Okay. That's all from my side. Thanks for, the Thank you. for taking my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Mandana from Fidelity International. Please go ahead. 
sorry, my question has been answered. Uh, so you can move on to the next participant. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mohit. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Harshal Patel from Sher Khan. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is uh, for the CAPEX for FY23. Sir, did you call out any number for FY23 CAPEX? Yes. Yeah. I'm mentioning this in the last few calls, and uh, we stand by that. Uh, okay. It's going to be next two years put together, it's going to be about 600 crores. Okay. And the composition also stays the same as uh, was uh, you know uh, discussed earlier? Yeah, it's about, uh, as of today, it, uh, it's going to be about 450 crores for the APIs and backward integration of APIs and all the green chemistry sustainability initiatives we have taken up. And 150 crores will be for the new formulations block. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, that was that. And sir, so just one thing I wanted to ask you is on the, if you could just speak a bit more on the transformation uh, thing which you mentioned in the opening remarks, maybe uh, what kind of a benefits or growth that we're targeting uh, after these transformation exercises is over? Uh, sure. Basically, uh, this is something very close to everybody's heart in the annuals today. And we have embarked on a journey. Uh, where we want to become a sustainable company. And every uh, bit of sustainability is built into our design or whatever we do, we think of sustainability first. Okay, while well, ESG is the most important thing, uh, environment is the most difficult thing. It's not easy to uh, get to near carbon neutrality or be sustainable on the environmental front. So there's so many initiatives we are taken up, mostly driven by uh, technology uh, and also like flow chemistry and biocatalytic reactions and a different way the pharma industry works and are going all the way backwards into chemicals, basic chemicals and uh, starting all our products from chemicals that are available in India and almost, uh, I mean, uh, I would say drastically reduce dependency on China and any other part of the world. So this means a different uh, mindset, a different skill set, and different capabilities. Most important is the mindset. People have to believe we can do this. Uh, we as a team believe we can do it. And we are building on uh, capabilities and talents of people, a lot of talent acquisition happening. And also not only bringing in talent, we are also working on partnerships with different companies to attain this talent and know-how. So, so much is happening. That's the reason I said we will update you as we go by uh, in um, quarter on quarter. But a real transformation is on the cards in granules. And uh, like I said, Dr. KVS Ramarao, who is with me today here, uh, has already settled down in the company. And uh, he is going to be leading this uh, transformation. Oh. Okay, okay. So uh, it would be safe to kind of look at it more so from a two, one year, two year down the line perspective. Would that it's be a good a multi, It's a multi, multi year journey, but we will start seeing some results after the second year. How okay. that? Okay, okay. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm done. All the best. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the of Tushar Bora from MK Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, congratulations to the management for uh, you know, a recovery after two, three quarters of challenging uh, results. A uh, couple of points. Uh, so just first, quick clarification. Uh, we have included the uh, UT drawback in the other operating income. So it's part of the PNL. Yes. Okay, right. Uh, if, uh, if, sir, if you could help uh, understand uh, how the non-code molecules as a block has been performing, uh, you know, let's say some kind of qualitative comments on, uh, you know, volume, market share, uh, you know, any kind of insights you want to hide those products, and also the pricing environment, uh, whether our strategy on, on you know, the non-core molecules, whether the strategy is something about uh, as we had uh, envisaged, say, you know, four to six quarters back. Yeah, I would like to take that. Uh, 
Sure. Uh, Tushar, hi. You're asking us about the market share for non-core molecules and also a little bit on the pricing, right, and our, our approach towards it? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, without getting into product specifics, because every product has a different um, uh, market share, I will say that uh, for the larger products where, especially the ones coming from India, we still have um, to tap at least half of the market share that we have in mind. We only went to half our uh, target share, but primarily because um, we're in, we're in um, a phase of the generic industry where most of our uh, most of the suppliers, uh, our competitors, are defending business because they probably are not receiving uh, further approvals or for a reason. So we don't want to engage in that right now. We want, I do see that to be a little bit non-sustainable because we understand the sourcing landscape of each of those products and we don't think it's very sustainable to maintain those prices. So we are being patient right now. Uh, we did capture a good share of each of the markets that we uh, wanted to already. Now, over the next, as we speak, we are continuously bidding. We do see a lot of um, shortages because of the reason that I mentioned already. So we are bidding slowly at the prices that we want, and we're accepting price. We're only accepting business if we get the margins and the prices that we think are sustainable going forward. And again, for each of these products, we have a long-term vision of where it would be because of everything that we're doing right from backward integration to CIP activities that we're implementing in place. So um, we do adjust pricing accordingly. Uh, so as a strategy, uh, would it be fair to say that uh, you know, you're looking at say maybe anywhere from 15 to 30% market share, maybe higher in, in a few, and at least uh, you know, corporate average margin profile possibly slightly higher for the new, new molecules? Uh, yeah, if you, look at the gross margin, if you look at the gross margin, it should be a little bit, I think they are a little bit higher. Um, and in terms of market shares for our core molecules, for not sorry, not core molecules, for the key molecules amongst the non-core, the big high volume ones, our market shares will be a little bit, uh, will be higher than the 30% that you mentioned. Uh, sticking on the subject, uh, you know, we have a number of launches done, say, over the last four to six quarters. Okay. Uh, what is the uh, optimum timeline over which these molecules start to stabilize, a, you know, into a, uh, a market share or a, you know, or you said, what is the vintage when you start to get the real results? Is it two years, is it three years, uh, you know, for the strategy as a whole? See, we already started seeing um, an increase in the contribution of core molecules, as you even saw as um, in, in the presentation. Uh, in terms of a percentage, that growth might be might look a little bit minimalistic to you, but if you look at the absolute term, absolute numbers, the growth is quite a bit. And now, if you expect, say, growth like a metformin, it would be it would certainly take us a few years to get there because of the size of the sheer size of the molecule. But look at the absolute terms; we certainly are growing, and that's coming even from um, a, defl a deflationary market at the moment. No, no, no. So just, all that growth is coming from non-core molecules. Yeah, no, uh, agreed. Thanks. Just to clarify, what I meant was, say, let's say a molecule that you've launched in uh, H2FY20 or H1FY21, yeah. so, you know, so four to six quarters back, would it be fair to say that sometime in FY24 you should start to see a you know, significantly higher contribution from those molecules uh, as they start to stabilize at much higher market share from today? Uh, I would, I would say even before offer. that, I would say even before that we could capture the market. But yeah, it, it really depends on um, the nature of our suppliers and how receptive they are to stabilizing prices, etc. So from our side, we're doing everything we can. Uh, that number seems reasonable. It's not earlier, a quarter or two earlier. Okay. Uh, a question on the backward integration uh, thought process. Uh, I am assuming uh, you know we would be starting and prioritizing PAP given the challenges we've had uh, in, in paracetamol last four quarters. But just to, uh, you know, to help us with the priority for backward integration for us overall amongst the portfolio, and how are we approaching this for the new molecules also? To share, now the journey for all the new molecules has been actually uh, starting with uh, uh, right from basic materials. So there's no such thing as KSMs buying from outside. So that's where the new molecules going forward. But all the existing molecules which we have, 
we have also started working on integrating all the way backwards. That is one, but all other products also we are working on. And this is what where I said will be a sustainable journey. So these products, again, when we make, it will be done in a green way. They are not going to be done in the normal way, where you cause a lot of pollution and other stuff. So a lot of work is happening. This could take about uh, two years to see the first results, but we are on the job. Uh, and sir, uh, the annual white plant uh, for PAP, uh, uh, when do we expect that to come on stream again? Do you have any clarity from them? Wait, which one, uh, Tusha? Uh, uh, you mentioned one Chinese supplier, but I think one of the largest... Oh, yeah. okay. uh, his supplier, his supposed to be starting as uh, trial runs this month, and we think in three months from today, we should be seeing the first uh, supplies from him. Great. Uh, so we we would uh, already be in conversations to sort of secure the earliest supplies, I suppose, being large. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's going to be a huge plan to, to share. And uh, when he was in full production, uh, there was a surplus of PAP around the world. So we, we do foresee that things will normalize once he streamlines his production. Okay. So just one last question on the, uh, say, Vizag, Onko, Hypo blog. Uh, any visibility on uh, you know revenue from there, and also on the new MUPS blog, when does it start contributing to revenue for us? No, next uh, next fiscal it will start contributing, maybe beginning of uh, Q2 or end of Q3. Q2 is the beginning; it may start contributing with the MUPS block. But on the Wizak plant, while uh, uh, Onco is going on it's a small part of a business. The real food, we have invested some uh, um, and about 80, 90 crores last year or this year in building a new API capacity there for high volume molecules. And this is going to be our uh, uh, future area of growth for new APIs. That's where some of our initiatives in green chemistry will also be implemented. So maybe we'll start seeing revenues, decent revenues next year. But uh, 24, uh, we can start seeing some of our uh, green initiatives coming to shape from that side. Okay, thank you very much. I'll join there. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to answer question. The next question is from the line of Gagan Pareja from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Okay, good evening. Uh, am I audible? Gagan, a little louder, Gagan. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, is this better? Is this better? A little more. Uh, closer to the mic. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, 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 I'll try and speak a little louder. Yeah, you're better now. You're better now. Yeah. So, so my, my first question is uh, on, on your year-to-date reported sales, if you could bifurcate the growth uh, into volume and realization. The Volume and realization of different products you are meaning, or uh, what exactly do you mean? If, if, you, if, you, if you are comfortably, uh, if you're comfortable giving it, uh, you know, uh, for your key products, uh, it would be helpful. Or if, if you want to, on an overall basis, I'm okay with that. Um, one minute, I think. Uh, one so you're asking later. about the total uh, growth in volume versus total growth in prices, yeah. or? Yeah, I'm seeing I'm simply I'm simply asking the split of the reported growth in in volume and prices. I believe volumes would have dropped year to date, whereas prices would have gone up. Uh, so I'm simply trying to understand the impact on your growth uh, from from uh, volume of uh, products sold and and the realizations on those products. Okay. We will not have the split now again, uh, but. Uh, yeah, but, but you can, I can broadly say uh, we are operating our uh, paracetamol capacity at around 60% and getting these revenues today. And, uh, and these revenues from paracetamol are more or less equivalent to running the plant at 100% in the past. Okay. Uh, that would be for paracetamol. Could you also elaborate a little bit on uh, ibuprofen and metformin? This may become a little sensitive then. Yeah. So there was some data in the investor's presentation. Sandeep, you can explain that? This slide. 
on an aggregate basis would it be possible to share this uh, break breaker or or that's that's not possible so it's becoming a little sensitive to to again sorry about this i think okay. uh, let's get this okay second question on ibuprofen uh, your your peer company uh, uh, on their call today indicated that basf's new capacity is fully automated and actually has a lower opex than 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 they themselves uh, that being the case even when demand comes back uh, don't you see this uh, uh, you know impacting the pricing of of ibuprofen and possibly also market shares for incumbents in ibuprofen i do pro let me say okay so can explain gazan that we used to have a api facility a jv in china uh, we have exited the jv so we no longer make the api so when uh, we had i do pro and api shortages the uh, jv really did help us a lot but today there's a lot of surplus capacity in the world and uh, of course bsf is the greenest and the lowest cost uh, technology in the us so they make product in us much cheaper than anybody else can so yeah it's going to be a tough time for the api manufacturers but uh, formulation as formulation man- manufacturers we are well protected we we should be able to maintain our margins on our ibuprofen all right and 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 you you've been emphasizing on backward integration if you could give us some idea on on the degree of backward integration as it stands today and as you envisage it five years down the line so today we are not backward integrated into uh, the uh, i would say all our products today but we have this uh, blueprint getting ready and we are working on it so from five years from today we will be integrated almost on most of our uh, raw materials basic materials okay and and uh, you know we keep hearing about the, the the china plus one narrative from a lot of companies uh, you know uh, there there's this uh, bid by large global pharma companies to try and attempt and reduce their dependence on on chinese apis and formulations but uh, i mean the the sticking point that i see is that the, the key starting materials in any case are always sourced from china unless that uh, unless there is a substitute there do you see a viable proposition uh, for for uh, a shift of formulations and uh, and api is away from china the formulations are already in an uh, india dominates much better than china and even in apis most of the apis are made here but the key intermediates for all the apis we depend on china the shift is already happening and uh, like i said that's one of our biggest initiatives we don't want to be dependent on anybody we want to go all the way backwards and start from the basic chemicals into the final product ourselves all the way so the shift is already happening and i'm sure like we are doing some of the companies are also working on this basis and i personally feel that uh in uh, uh i mean in in the next 6 uh, 7 years the dependency on china uh, will become minimal okay and and finally you know just your thoughts on 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 uh, the company's road map uh, over a five year time frame you know your aspirations and 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 your road map for both the formulations and the api business uh, with with a five year time frame in mind well, let me put it in another way again in five years our aspiration is to become a fully integrated sustainable company with the highest level of uh, compliance on everything compliance is what the man i would say our aspiration is to become a near zero uh, carbon neutral company and integrated all the way and uh, by doing that in all our products the advantage we get is not only uh, helping the environment we do believe all these things will give us uh, better sustainable margins when you say better sustainable margins uh, could you give some idea of you know what and whatever what whatever the current technology can offer by going green the margins could improve further okay thanks i'll i'll get back to you thank you for your answers okay. thank you very much participants you may press star and one to ask a question 
anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one and now hand the conference over to dr krishna prashad chairman and managing director for closing comments so once again uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for being with us and uh, hearing us out and uh, i would like to sum up by mentioning that we have embarked on a very exciting journey uh, and we are going to transform ourselves and uh, we wish to share our uh, uh, progress and achievements on a quarter on quarter basis with you thank you very much thank you very much on behalf of granules india limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now